In December 1985, the CIA published, secretly published, a research paper on the French left titled France, Defection of the Leftist Intellectuals. This was sanitized and released through a Freedom of Information Act request in 2011. Look at that. Why were they studying radical theory and philosophy? Why were they worried about it? Now, if you want an expert opinion on the left, no matter what that means to you, you shouldn't ask a leftist. Odds are they're too busy calling another leftist a sock dem on the internet to take stock of their own political capacity. But the CIA is the expert when it comes to the left. They've spent billions of dollars researching, intimidating, smearing, surveilling, and murdering leftists since the Second World War. And the books that I introduce on this channel, they were watching the authors too, sitting in on lectures maybe, attending conferences on late structuralism, I don't know. But Reagan's CIA had its eyes peeled. Now, today, leftists who read theory or talk about reading theory like to think of this as a deviant activity. Don't let dad find that radical theory collection you've stashed under the bed. Shh. <laughs> well, and once you find the right combinations of words you like, then you can be just like your favorite radical and it's off to the marketplace of ideas, trying to sort out the real problems of who's the most radical and who's got the hottest takes. More radical! This is like fighting in an alleyway behind the marketplace of ideas that pretty much no one else even knows existed, right? So just chill. And it turns out, long before Twitter invective, more radical, the CIA was watching the people that we consider to be our radical theorists, even still. So here's what they found. And this was in 1985, remember, the heyday of our radical boys here and women. Actually, she was accused of working for the Bulgarian KGB. Her code name was Sabina. And they said that they dropped her for being too Maoist, which, I don't know, that's kind of badass. She denies it. Anyway, the CIA looked at the lineup here and concluded that, quote, they pose no significant intellectual opposition to US policies. Damn. Disappointed? That isn't all, though. This new left activism is likely to increase bickering between the communists and socialists and within the Socialist Party, and it will probably increase voter defection. The last 30 years have proven them absolutely right in France. In some, American hegemony has nothing to worry about from radical ideas. And they don't even need to intervene because the left is already owning itself by infighting. I feel like, shit, I lost it. I, I, had, a, I had a point there. This is Lessons from the CIA. Details, details, so who's brought up in this report? Foucault, a lot of Foucault, also Sartre, Lacan, Althusser, many of whom are already dead when this report was published, though their influence was certainly not. So France has had a special relationship to its radical intellectuals. For example, 50,000 people lined the streets for Sartre's funeral. That's real celebrity, that's an astral world. Now the CIA was curious, and what they were curious about was whether the rock star popularity of these intellectuals could convert into French government policy. This may be news to someone out there, but it's policy, not ideas, that threaten American interests. And that explicitly was the connection they were looking for when they wrote this report. Let's rewind a few decades because at one time the CIA was really concerned about France. After the war, the Communist Party was the largest in the country. So what happened to all that? We have Le Parti Communiste Francais, the French Communist Party or PCF. And theirs is pretty much the story of the French left. So immediately after the Second World War, the PCF was the largest party in France and was led by the Comintern. And while the party remained loyal to the USSR, and often because it remained loyal to the USSR, they lost seats in every subsequent election. The membership was split, 
especially over the invasions of Hungary and Czechoslovakia. Then the Sino-Soviet split happened, which means a bunch of them became Maoists, further splitting the party membership. Also, the centrist parties allied against them and changed electoral laws, which made it tougher for them to win seats. But still, the PCF remained a, a viable political force in France up until the time that this document was written. But they had been replaced as the dominant party on the left by Le Parti Socialiste, that is basically the Sock Dems. Here's how the Socialist Party did last election. Eesh. Now, as to the intellectuals, the kind of point of this video, the philosophers whose names we know, they were sort of in and out of the Communist Party. The USSR stuff, you know, it eventually became too much for them to stomach, with the exception of Louis Althusser. You know him as the ideology guy. He tried to get his students in there, some students you may have heard of. Derrida, Rancière, Foucault, Balibar, and Jacques Alain Miller. That's Zizek's teacher. Quite an eye for talent. And then we get the big split. No coming back from it. May 1968. So there was a large general strike in France spearheaded by students, student unions, and union workers. The students, the radicals, believed they had the momentum and support required to overthrow the government real revolution. It was an open question too. The president had already fled the country. However, the Communist Party settled for wage increases, significant wage increases actually for the union workers, but enabled de Gaulle, the president, to return to power. Now, Althusser did not support the students in the May 68 movement. He was in the hospital when it happened, but after he tried to reconcile his critics, including his own students, with the Communist Party line. He called the students infantile, said they were basically LARPing an anarchist libertarian ideology. And you know, when he says that word, there's some weight behind it. He said that the workers' strike and its gains were the real center of the events of May. Now, this became a big sore spot for the younger generation of intellectuals. Guattari, for example, said, We were confused about the turn of events after May 68. We belong to that political generation whose political consciousness awoke during the liberation. In the enthusiasm and naivety and the conspiracy myths of fascism that came with it. Also, the questions left unanswered by the aborted revolution in May 68 developed in a counterpoint that we found troubling. We were worried, like many others, about the future being prepared for us by those singing the hymns of a newly made over fascism. That new fascism basically is the neoliberal world order, the one that the CIA has been working on and succeeding at since uh, JFK, at least. So the students and radicals felt like they'd been betrayed. They had all the energy there and the Communist Party sold out and denounced the student protests. The revolution had been betrayed. And this was the split of the radicals who internalized from then on a distrust of partisans, bureaucracy, and so on. For the radical French left after that, the PCF stood for bureaucracy and deference to the Soviet Union. Though it should be noted, even the PCF broke with Moscow for the first time over the invasion of Czechoslovakia. But still, as time went on, Soviet leadership became an increasingly tough sell. With this split, the 68 split of the left, and because the universities got a bunch more independence as an overture after 68, the intellectual, the radical intellectuals we now read, all gathered up together in the University of Paris 8 with Foucault as the head of the philosophy department, where he hired, ready for this, Deleuze, Badiou, Rancière, Balibar, Lyotard, Negri, Lacan, Irigaray, Miller, Zizek went there, everyone went there. Now with all this radical energy in one place, that's like half my channel on one camera campus, you'd expect, I don't know, what would you expect? Something? Their focus became more like cultural critique. It became reflecting on 68 why it failed. It became, what do we do now with Marxism? 
It became Foucault and Badiou fighting with Deleuze. Oh yeah, and the CIA ostensibly spying on them all. At one point, uh, a bunch of students smashed holes through the ceilings looking for police microphones because they were convinced paranoidly, but correctly, that they were being spied upon. They smashed up the ceilings, didn't find anything, but they were there. The paranoia was not misplaced. Anyway, this is probably more correlation than causation, but in effect, with all these radicals in one place on one campus, putting all this energy into fighting each other, French politics just drifted rightward from then on till today. This CIA report says explicitly, even more effective in undermining Marxism were those intellectuals who set out as true believers to apply Marxist theory in the social sciences, but ended by rethinking and rejecting the entire tradition. Now that's a little bit overstated, but at least we have these new critiques of power, ideology, desire, that in a way took the place of that former emphasis on collective politics. The CIA's take on that is that the bad taste left by disillusionment with Marxism in the mouths of virtually every leftist intellectual has translated directly into a new kind of neutralism that has contributed to their immobilization. You see that? I don't know how to, I don't know how to understate that. Neutralism, immobilization. And you know, they are the experts. In addition, I think they got too arcane. The CIA thinks they got too arcane. I mean, this is some of the hardest, densest vocabulary you can read. And it's really difficult, if not impossible, to relate power critique, ideology critique, desire to public policy. And it wasn't always like that. For example, a few decades before, Sartre, de Beauvoir, and Merleau Ponty together worked and wrote in this journal called Les Temps Modernes which was really publicly popular and influential. Now here's the CIA on the situation in the 80s. Mitterrand, that's the, the president, Mitterrand's failure to garner needed support among France's historically powerful leftist intellectuals reflects a historic shift that may presage a new role for the intelligentsia. No longer can his socialist party rely on the intellectuals to provide a rationale for its policies and actions and to sell that rationale to a French public that has customarily placed great store in the explanations of its intellectual elites. So now, instead of having the ear of power, the new philosophers compensated for their own often abstruse prose by becoming exciting media personalities, defending their points of view in the long intellectualized television and radio programs that the French relish. Their influence was primarily negative, however, since they had little to offer in the way of practical suggestions for a new program. Media, instead of policy. Ooh, that's a nerve. Now, what's the effect? Here's what the CIA correctly predicted as their conclusion, and it's dark. This climate of intellectual opinion will almost certainly make it very difficult for anyone to mobilize significant opposition among intellectual elites to US policies in Central America, for example. Now, what was the older generation doing? You see what I'm getting at here? It is also likely to deny other European intellectuals, notably in Scandinavia and West Germany, who are hostile to US policies and interests, the powerful leadership they formerly received from the French. So this report signifies a shift, a real shift, and it ain't a good one. In some, the CIA is down with your radical theory. They aren't gonna cancel your critical theory or anarchist YouTube channel because they've done the reading. They were at Parasite and they decided, eh, Nothing to worry about here. I hate to say it, I, I, I do hate to say it, but we are not pissing dad off at all. Now, I'm not a big lessons guy, but there are at least a few things to note here. It wasn't just capitalism that made the left irrelevant in this case. It was the left. 
factionalizing, fighting each other, and then taking their energy to this tiny little cloister while leaving any sense of collective politics back on the barricades. They dove instead into rivalries, abstruse prose and vocabulary, such that only grad students have any idea of what the hell they're talking about. And then they're just left to exchange barbs, nitpicks back and forth, which builds nothing but egos. That's what happened in France. Now, let me rephrase that in the first person. We dive into rivalries and abstruse prose such that only other grad students have any idea what the hell we're talking about. And then we're left to exchange nitpicks and barbs back and forth, which builds nothing but egos. Hey! So, lessons from the CIA. The lesson is this. We, and there is a we here, do not need to be more radical. That's not something to brag about. If you're gonna be proud of something, be proud of being reconciliatory, because that would have made a difference here. Be proud of making complex ideas into something relevant to public life and people around you, not for elevating your soapbox one inch higher, because you can poke little holes in someone's political determinations when you know you probably want the same world that they do. I'll leave you with some Deleuze. He thought a lot about 68, and as an event considered that it hadn't even yet ended. You might see yourself in here, I know I do. The children of May 68, you can run into them all over the place, even if they are not aware of who they are, and each country produces them in its own way. Their situation is not great. These are not young executives. They are strangely indifferent, and for that very reason, they are in the right frame of mind. They have stopped being demanding or narcissistic, but they know perfectly well that there is nothing today that corresponds to their subjectivity, to their potential of energy. They know that all the current reforms are rather directed against them. They are determined to mind their own business as much as they can. They keep it open, hang on to something possible. There can only be a creative solution. Keep it open. And if you don't know what that means, to me, at the bare minimum, it means not being a pedantic cretin on the internet. And I'm, I don't know who this is for. I see the debates, I see the shots fired. And I think it's worth it to say none of this is anything new. More radical! So, solidarity. This has been Lessons from the CIA. Oh. While my mic is still hot here, look, look at you people. I can't make anything except for you and I'm grateful that I've made something or other here or there that you think is worth your money to support this content. Um, if you don't know if it's worth your money, there is like hundreds of hours of exclusive content on the Patreon and new stuff every week. But thank you again to these people. Uh, I'm turning off my mic now. More radical!